Today we're going to be using some beautiful fibre gel. I was kindly gifted from Dorota Politska and this is the perfect rose fibre gel. It's absolutely beautiful and also the Design Nails Gel Art in White French. This is from Dorota's brand. She's taken over um, what was now perfect. So it's now, it's now Dorota's brand. So this is the clear fibre gel. Um... And I'm also going to be using some, I'm going to be sculpting. I'm going to be sculpting with gel. I've got these nail mate forms out my cupboard. They haven't had a dusting off for a while, have they? I've prepped my nails. They're all prepped. So we don't need to worry about that. Now, I'm just going to dehydrate. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit. You don't need to use a whole lint-free pad soaked, I suppose, do you? Just use a tiny corner. Um, so this is quite a long video. But believe me, it was very, very long. And I've cut down quite a lot. Um, so if anything's like replicated over and over again, you don't need to see it. So I quickly sculpted out the base of this pinky because you're going to see lots of sculpting. It's a very thin, clear base. Very, very thin. And I'm going to go in with Madame Glam's Shagadelic. You can save money with that. I've got a link. I'll link everything in the description box, but you can save money with Madame Glam when you use my code. This is a jelly colour. So I've obviously cured the um, fibre gel. And I haven't filed it or touched it. So yeah, it's a bit wishy-washy at the edges. That doesn't matter. It's a very thin layer. And I'm just going to do one coat of this. Now, what I should have done was sprinkle the wet gel with glitter. But I got excited and I cured the gel first. It's no biggie, but it would have made it easier. This is the glitter. It's called Candy Sparkle. Isn't it beautiful? You can get that on my website in the February box. It will be available on its own, but not yet. So at the moment, February box only. And I'm just going to take a simple fan brush that I got from a bit of cheap makeup brushes that I had lying about. Never used it, so I'm using it for nails. And it's perfect for sprinkling glitter. Absolutely perfect. Now these nails are going to be a bit naughty because they're anti-Valentine's nails. Let me know if you've got your wax melt on and what you're sniffing. I have, um, oh God, what's it called? Alien Sparkle on today, which is basically the alien perfume. I've got that on my wax melt today. Oh, look at that. I'm just gonna push, push that glitter down a little bit. Just tap, tap, tap. Just make sure it sits a bit flatter. If I'd have done this over wet gel, it would have sat flat naturally, but it didn't, so you know. And then I'm going to just shove it in the lamp quickly just to see if it helps it stick, which it did a little bit. I've cleaned it up and now I'm going in with the clear fibre gel. And I'm going to encapsulate this and I'm not going to do it all in one go because I think too much pressure will move the loose bits of glitter around. So you're best off just building it up a bit. No rush, just nice and gently. The best thing about gel is you can just go with the flow, literally just let it flow. And you can build it up, cure it, build it up, cure it. So, yeah, let me know what you're melting today. And, oh, the February box wax melt is a stunner. It smells so good. We've been uh, testing out some new fragrances for you as well, which are going to be released at the end of this month. And they are a beautiful. Well, not the end of this month. We're already at the end of the month. We're at the beginning of a new month. They'll be released very soon. <laughs> oh my God. I forgot it's February today. Pinch and a punch for the first day of the month and all that. Happy Chinese New Year. There you go. Right, so I've just sped it up a little bit. I've done, I've cured the first layer. I'm just going to put a little slip layer down. And then we'll just encapsulate a bit more. I'm not worried about the edges being a bit lumpy bumpy because this gel files so easily. It's no big deal. It really is no big deal. I find it harder sculpting with clear gel actually, because I just find it harder to see where I'm going. I, I prefer sculpting with um, nude gel. If I'm holding it upside down, then I'm going to give it a full cure. I'm just going to take off the sticky layer so I don't get any fluff on it while I'm working on the next nails. 
So just take off that inhibition layer. Lovely. It looks gnarly at the moment. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Right, I'll show you me sculpting this next one. So I'm just matching up the forms. The little tabs need to match. And then I'm just going to start lining it up and making sure it all sits nicely. I do a sculpting course in acrylic. It's just a skill building course. I am uh, currently writing the accredited course, but it takes me ages because uh, I have very little spare time. <laughs> so, and I'm also gonna be releasing the um, gel sculpting skill building class. They're different to accredited. Skill building classes are shorter. Um, accredited courses are longer with more work for you to do so yeah but if you if you just need to like know a few of the basics and, and kind of need help with form fitting and things like that then skill buildings good enough right so I'm going to apply the universal air bond to the natural nail this goes along with the system and let that dry down quickly it doesn't need curing just let it dry and then we're going in with that beautiful rose gel. I forgot what it's called. Is it Perfect Rose or something like that? Anyway, I'll let you know. It's in the description box. It's beautiful. It's a gorgeous colour. So I'm going to kind of massage it into the nail plate nice and gently. Just get it in because you're pushing it into all those little bits of the nail. It'll stick better. You'll get a much better adhesion. All those little micro ridges on the natural nail. And then I'll start adding more product and just building up the shape. Not the full structure yet, but I want a bit more product on that stress area. Because that's where the form meets the nail. If it's gonna snap, that is where it will snap. And I'm just going to start bringing that product from the free edge down the form. We're going to a number three. So that's why from three onwards, I've just pinched the form closed. It's, it's unnecessary to have it all flapping in the wind. And what I'll do is I'll build up a base layer, give it a good cure, and then continue to build on the structure. And as you can see, like once I get to the sides, I'm just using the very tip of my brush to kind of paint the gel into place. Every time you move your hand, the gel starts to move. So you've just got to be aware that if you work too slow or if it's too warm, you'll forever be chasing it if you apply too much. So you just build it up in um, thinner layers. But if it's cold, it was quite cold in my room today. I was able to put quite a bit on and if it started to slowly move, I could just go in and quickly sort it out like there. Look, just started to move a bit. I'll go and sort that out and then we'll pop him in the lamp. It wasn't too, too much work chasing it. This gel is self-leveling as well. I, I, all my students, I recommend this gel to everybody. If they say, look, I really don't know what brand to work with, I tell them to get this. Um, unless they've already got one they're happy with, that's, that's fine. After 30 seconds, I give it a pinch and then cure for the rest of the 60 seconds. And then we're gonna go in and just build up the rest of the nail, apply a little slip layer, and we're gonna start working on the structure of the nail then using a bigger scoops of the product. They're like beads, but not beads. They're blobs. Let's call them blobs. Big blob. And I'm focusing most of the product in the middle of the nail because if you just, if you take the too much product to the side, it will just drip down the side after a couple of minutes. So focus it in the middle and then I kind of tidy up the sides just before I put it in the lamp. That's what I tend to do. So you work, you're working on the spine of the nail more than anything. And then just little bits at the side just to even it out. And then we go into the lamp. Because I'm twisting my hands. It's much easier on someone else actually, because I'm twisting my hands and that's gonna make the gel start to flow as well. So I've got to go back, double check that. I can see that it's flowed over a little bit. So I'll sort that out. But first I just want a bit more in my apex area. And as you can see, I'm using the underneath of the brush when I'm working through the body of the nail. And then I'll use the tip of the brush at the edges where I need to just kind of move small bits of product. 
So you can, I'm really having just constant contact with the underneath and now I'm just tipping my hand upside down to level everything out. Okay, so that one's done. We're going to apply isopropyl alcohol or you could use a prep spray or anything like that. Just to remove the sticky layer. Then I do the same on the next nail, poof, like magic. And then we're onto the index finger. Now my index finger swoops right round. So I have to kind of counter it with the form and it feels weird, but otherwise the nail will literally go completely off to the left. So again, universal air bond. This time we're gonna build the nail in clear. So um, same thing as building it with the nude, massaging it into the nail plate, letting it really grip to that nail plate so you've got extra good adhesion and then starting to build up the product, build up the stress area, pull the product through the form and create your shape. So I'll let you watch this with a bit of lovely music. And again, after 30 seconds, I'm going to take the nail out, pop the pinching clamp on. You've got to get these right, otherwise they will hurt. If it hurts, it's not right. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to reinforce that shape a little bit because I want to take the form off. But I need to make sure the nail's not too thin or it will snap when I remove the form. So I'm just adding a bit more product and then I'll cure it. And yes, we can take the form off without the nail snapping, thank goodness. Right. So I'm actually going to remove the inhibition layer quickly, really carefully, because this is where the nail could break, because there's just not enough support there yet. And I'm going to turn the nail over and do the uh, glacier nail underneath, because I just fancied it. I just fancied a glacier nail. So I'm just applying a bit of the gel underneath, not too much, you don't want to over flood it and not too close to your hyponychium either because you just you don't want it curing on that. That would be not good. That would be very not good. Take some cling film, saran wrap, plastic wrap, whatever you call it. And first thing I do is create a barrier so that it doesn't go up to the hyponychium. So I'm tucking it in there to create the barrier. And then I'll start making crinkles with the plastic wrap. Once I'm happy with it, it takes a couple of seconds, look, this is in real time. So I'm just poking around, I'm happy, it's going to go in the lamp. In it goes. 60 second cure, take that off. And you've got a glacier nail. Woohoo! You need to take the inhibition layer off the underneath, otherwise you'll have a fluffy nail underneath. And now I'm going to build up a smile line. Now, you can do these different ways. Today, I wanted to do it in the reverse method. I don't know why. I think it's probably because I've been using acrylic so much instead of hard gel but I just went straight in with a reverse smile line and then thought to myself probably could have done this an easier way but you know I wanted a challenge so all I'm doing is applying the bead in the reverse method and then blending it back up I'll do the front half of the smile line first so the extended nail bed it's coming out from the free edge I made it quite rounded I probably could have gone a little bit narrower She's quite rounded, but you know, it's personal preference. I actually prefer a more um, almond and almost to a point on a smile line. I'm not a big fan of round smile lines. And yet here I am doing one and I'm looking at it thinking, well, I don't like it, but that's just personal preference. So I've had it cured and then I'm applying a little slip layer and I'm going back in and we're going to build the rest of that smile line out. So I'm just pillowing the product at the cuticle 
which is literally just using your brush to gently push down so the product pulls forward and kind of rests in the correct area. And then I'll drag that product down into a smile line. And what I'll do is just correct it here and there where it needs it, but cure it in between so that I'm not working with too much product at once because it will run away and um, you'll lose that um, wall that you've created. So it's best off to just do a bit, cure, do a bit, cure. So here's me just kind of like working on little bits that are annoying me. So that edge needed a bit more definition. The tip of the smile line needed a bit more definition. And then it's cured and I'll remove the inhibition layer and file the smile line before I do anything else. Because I need that sharp. So I'm pressing the file right up against it. It will slip a bit here and there. Don't worry about that. That's all good. It's easier with a metal file, but I can't find mine. Can't find it anywhere. I've been looking for it for months. I've just I don't know where it is. So, yeah, filing it in. And then, once I'm happy with it, we'll get rid of all that dust because you can't do a thing if it's still dusty. I keep getting distracted by the cat. Right, so I'm using my Ollie brush to get rid of the dust. And then I'm going in with that Shagadelic colour from Madame Glam and it's cool because now we've got like a jelly glacier nail so I really like that effect and then I went in with this bright pink colour and I can't remember what it's called it's like it is called something like bright pink or bright barbie pink something like that but I will put it in the description box along with a link that you can use to go to, straight to Madame Glam's website. Don't be alarmed if it takes you to the US site and you're in the UK. Um, shipping is still absolutely fantastic. It is not overpriced and I don't get charged loads of customs fees or anything sneaky like that. There's nothing hidden. It's always amazing, amazing service. I'm using the Madame Glam long liner brush for this as well. And I'm just literally tracing the smile line, aren't I? I'm just I'm painting the walls. I'm not going over them like you do with a 3D French. I'm just sticking up the side of the wall. And then I'll just blend the two gel polishes together. They're going to be covered anyway. And this time I did leave the gel wet. And while that gel is still wet, I'm going in with my glitter, Candy Sparkle. And I'm just pressing it in gently with my gel brush. Just tapping it in really, really gently because you don't want to get loads of gel on the brush or because it's already a bit sticky. And I'm just making it thicker, sort of more dense at the smile line and then ombre down into the rest of the nail. There we are, look. I'll add a tiny bit more around the smile line because I really want that glitter packed in there. And then once I'm happy with that, that's going in the lamp for a cure. And I'll cure it for 60 seconds, even though Madame Glam gels are only a 30 second because I know I've covered it in glitter. So I really want the light to penetrate. So now that's all cured. We need to encapsulate. And I'm gonna do that using the clear fiber gel. And I'll just apply a little slip layer on that smile line on that extended nail bed. And then we'll start to build up with the fiber gel. And the name of the game here is just to even out the nail. Bring it back so it's all looking nice and even and all sitting right. You can work again in smaller layers. They don't. You don't have to work in big, thick layers. It's whatever you feel comfortable with, isn't it? And um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you watch this.
So once I'm happy, I'll tip my nail upside down and fully cure for the final cure, like so. Then I filed them all off camera. Here you are, they're all filed. Lovely jubbly. And now we're gonna go in and use, the thumb is the same as the pinky, by the way. We're gonna use the uh, white French art gel from uh, Dorota Politska's website. This is, this is nice. I like this. The consistency is thinner than I thought it would be. I thought it would be really thick, but it's not, but it's really pigmented. So it's nice, it's nice to work with. It's perfect. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Oh, you'll never guess what, while I'm here, I'll just let you know what I'm doing with my brush. I'm just literally tickling the cuticle with it. Just tickle, tickle. Um, Mr. B's got COVID now. Mr. B's got COVID. Would you believe it? And Oliver said this evening, I'm not feeling well. So I hope tomorrow's lateral flow tests are clear. We will see from me and Oliver. Um, so that's going to have a full cure. And then, wait for it, I'm using these fantastic decals. These are in our February bling box. Now, there's some lovely ones, but there's also some very, very rude ones. And that's what we're going to use today because my nails are anti-Valentine's nails. So um, I chose rude words and I'm not going to necessarily say them, but you can read them. Um, so I'm applying a bit of base coat, Madame Glam's base coat, just so that when I take these decals out of the water, which they've had a 30 second soak, that one says no, I can say that. Now look how these pop. To get the best out of decals, you must use them on white gel. You can paint around it afterwards, but put them on white gel because my God, they pop. They really, really do. Look at that. No, mm -mm. this one's a little bit ruder. Oh no, this one's not too bad. This is loser. This one's not too bad. The last one's a rude word. Um, there we go. And then the last one is um, knobhead. That's what the last one is. A doorknob head. Um, I, there were really rude ones on there, but I was being tame because I knew I was putting it on YouTube. <laughs> so I'm going to cure that nail and then pop another layer of base coat over the top. Look how they pop though. Definitely like amazing on white gel. So good. Give that a cure and then we'll go in with Madame Glam's No Wipe Top Coat. Now in the February bling box, you get two lots of decals. You get the candy hearts and you also get the, the Valentine's gonks, which are the cutest things I have ever seen. There we are, nice layer of top coat. Into the lamp she goes for a 30 second cure. But that nail's not finished. We do come back to it later to add some more art. She's finished for now. Onto the bling. So this is the February stacker, which is only available in the bling box. And there's loads of different colors in here. I'm using fuchsia at the moment. And then I'm going in with, I can't remember. It's like a deep purple aubergine color. Can't remember, there's so many colors in this stacker. There we go. And then I'm gonna apply a couple of teeny tiny ones, just there. This crystal mix is my favorite so far. It's very beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna do that thing that I hate doing, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to use caviar beads. I'm using Madame Glam's Soak Off Builder Gel. And I am doing little sections at a time and making it look like a chain on necklace. Now it's fiddly, and I don't expect you to watch the whole thing, so I'll just show you what I do quickly here, and then we'll I'll show you further down the line so that you don't have to watch the whole thing. I just apply a few at a time, just in a little section. You see, I've done that side. I'm gonna add an AB, I'm gonna add, a, it's a big heart. It's not the small one that's in the uh, February bling box. This is a bigger one. 
and I'm going to knock it around with my tweezers a bit because I knocked it, I put it in the right place and then knocked it. So clumsy. There we are. Okay, and I'll do the other side with the caviar beads. I'm just going to pop one in at the bottom there as well. So as if by magic, pew, there you go, both sides done. Then I'm going to apply an AB raindrop and then one of the dark purple crystals underneath. And that is the crystal work done. Beautiful. And then I decided I was going to buff the candy heart nail as well in a second. But I'll do a little cuff on here first. So I'm using some of the pinks and uh, like bright pinks and, and rose crystals on this one. Beautiful. Get that in there. Straight on, out of shot, you know, like a pro. <laughs> I'm using the Alina pickup tool as well. That's on the website. It's all on the website. Everything's on the website. I'm on the website. <laughs> I'm not for sale though. You won't want me. Okay, so now I'm going to buff that middle nail and I'm going to apply some of those bright pink crystals just dotted about on the nail. And I got this idea from Jess. She did it on one of hers and I was like, oh yeah, girl, that's such a good idea. I'm going to do that. I'm going to steal that idea from you. So yeah, she inspired that sort of sporadic placement, which I love. I don't normally think to do that. I'm normally very much must have a set piece, but I like this dotting them about the nail. It's just an excuse to get even more bling on there. Yes. Nightmare to top coat, but really nice to look at. So once I'm happy with all that, we need to start top coating these nails. Now I have got you a Barry White style close up of top coating the thumb. So first I'm just gonna remove any little bits of dust because this is gonna be such a good reveal of our glitter. Are you ready? I've done it in slow-mo. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. Is that not satisfying? Oh, so satisfying. Yes, mate. So that is our beautiful candy sparkle glitter, which will, if you've got the February bling box, you've got it. If you don't have the February bling box, unfortunately, you'll have to wait a little bit to get it, but it will be available. Oh, look at that. And I made a mistake here. Don't do this. Don't top coat the underneath. I kept it in to show you. I'd forgotten that this takes away the crackle effect. Silly me. Um, anyway, I'm going to top coat this bit now. Which is beautiful. I'm not going over the crystals. You'll see I'll go around the crystals, but not over them. And then I'll use a detailer brush to seal them in at the base as well. So I'm going in with my Madame Glam's long liner and I'm just using a little bead of top coat and I just disperse it at the crystal and it soaks in. Okay, now I'll show you a bit of this. Here's the thing, you have to go around each crystal and you can't really use much of the brush on the nail because of where the crystals are. You can get away with a little nudge here and there like this, but it was a bit of a faff to top coat, I'm not gonna lie, but it's worth it because it looks pretty. It does look nice. And the same with the crystal design nail. Um, I went for a gloss top coat on that, which quite often when I'm doing crystals, I actually use a matte top coat, but I fancy gloss today. So I'm going to just fill it in in sections. And I'm using the Ultra Liner now from Madame Glam, because it's not as long as the long liner, but it's thicker. So it's quite good for, for things like this. I'll tuck it in all around those little caviar beads. and then just fill in the rest of the nail. Again, there's no point me using the big brush, I'll just make a mess. So I'm just going to use a detailer brush for the whole thing and just tuck it in. It's actually quite therapeutic. Sometimes I get itchy feet and I just wanna get up, but I find it quite therapeutic because I've got to be careful, I've got to concentrate, which my brain doesn't always do. So yeah, tucking it in around the crystals, not over the top. There we are. And I'm also making sure all the time that I'm pulling that top coat through the nail, not letting it pull in any areas where it will like will lose the shape of the nail. 
So you need to drag it through, but especially at the sides, you don't want it gathering and then whoop, over the side and you've got a big lumpy bit. And then after that, it's just the pinky left to top coat. And she's so diddy, the brush is bigger than the pinky nail. Look at that. Oh, pure glitter goodness. Then I'm going to do some curing and some cuticle oil and I'm going to do the big reveal. Look, is she pretty? So sparkly. Are you ready? Right, let's do the final reveal. There we go. I really love these. I hope you like them too, even if they are a bit naughty. Don't forget, if you've bought the February Bling Box or you're going to get the February Bling Box, share your work on social media and tag Alina Crystals and you're in with the chance of winning the March Box. So Neve from Ireland won our February Box. Congratulations, Neve, And you could win next month's box completely free. I'll see you in my next video. Tally bye!